Hi, and welcome to Visru's walkthrough series. Uh, my name is Milan, along here with my co-host, Ben. And today we have a guest, Justin, who's a product manager here at Visru, and he's going to be walking us through the process of creating an app container. Uh, take it away, Justin. Yeah, so let's get started creating a new app. So when you log into Visru, um, you'll land on the My Apps page, which is a collection of applications that are uh, in this tenant already. So if we wanted to create a new application, we can click on create an app. And we have two options here. We can either build a new application from scratch or we can import a, um, an existing application or a framework. And Justin, what's the difference uh, between the app framework and the existing app? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So uh, a new app container or this build a new app button is essentially your starting point uh, when you want to create a new application from scratch. Um, so Visru also gives you the option to import an app or framework, but the key difference uh, between the two is that the app does not allow you to, um, to modify it in any way while the framework does. So if you wanted to utilize an existing app without any further customizations, um, you could actually import it as an app and then start using it right away, right? Um, and then our frameworks are essentially just blueprints of applications um, that allow you to build on top of it to fit specific business needs. Oh, okay, makes sense. Thank you. Cool. So let's go ahead and start building a uh, new application. So we'll start very easy here. Uh, let's create a, an application that, ta that tracks uh, our tasks. So a task management app. So we'll name it task management. We'll leave the storage as workflow cloud and we'll hit continue. So Looks while you're like doing this, I know we're I know we're building an app container, but what's the whole purpose behind even doing this portion in the first place? Or what value do we have from this thing? Oh sure. So an app container um, by itself is you can think of it as your your sandbox, right? So first you really don't have anything, it's just an empty empty sandbox. Um, but then you can start to bring your ideas into the sandbox and then uh, see them come to life. So that's the idea. Gotcha. So it's kind of like you just glue that holds everything together pretty much? Exactly, yeah. Nice, okay. Okay, so it looks like task management name already exists. We'll call it task management two and we'll hit continue. Okay, so our app container is created. Um, so depending on how familiar you are with uh, Visru, you can do the guided tour, uh, which we'll do, or you can start creating new dashboards and workflows. Uh, but for the purpose of this, um, we'll go ahead and do the self-guided tour. Now it's gonna come up with a pop-up and it's gonna ask you um, to give a name to your first dashboard. Um, so let's call it my task. All right. Um, so the first step will uh, tell you to create a spreadsheet, and then we'll go into forums, data lists, etc. Um, so the, see, these are the examples of uh, some of the things that you can actually add into uh, visitor dashboards. Um, so some of the common objects that we allow users to import are uh, data lists and data grids, which allow you to uh, represent a data set to the user. Um, and then we can add forms against that data list if you wanted to edit or add anything, add to anything in the list. Uh, and then we also have charts, right? So you can gain insights into your data sets by using uh, pie charts, uh, line charts, bar graphs, etc. And then we also have uh, HTML cards, which allow you to design custom widgets. Uh, one of the cool things that Visu provides is um, called the UX library. So even if you don't know how to work with HTML, you could pick up a template from the UX library uh, and then place it on the dashboard. And so um, all of these objects you see here are were designed with the business user in mind, right? So you don't have to get subject matter experts to come in uh, to help bring your design to life. Um, you can do it all on your own. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and start creating our spreadsheet. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, what are, what are a couple of examples of, of like the types of dashboards that we, people would use? 
like typically like common dashboards. Okay, so for a list of for sorry for common dashboards, um, we'll just use this application as an example that we're building a task management app. Um, so typically, we'd have some kind of dashboard where it shows um, a list of tasks, right? It could be uh, all the tasks in the system. It could be filtered uh, to show your tasks only, um, et cetera. And then maybe it'll have like a count, like, okay, this is how many tasks are on the list. These are how many that are opened, closed, uh, pending, or in progress, et cetera. Uh, and then you might have a dashboard uh, for KPIs, right? To track the progress on a specific project that a manager might actually use um, to get insight uh, to see if uh, things are falling behind, are they on track, um, things of that nature. Gotcha. So it's kind of taking all of the elements that you've put in and, and displaying it in a visually appealing way that gives you the information that you would need for your enterprise, if I'm exactly. understanding that correctly. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's create our first spreadsheet. And uh, one of the things that we need to think about is um, what are, excuse me, what are some of the data points we want to capture uh, against the task? So we'll first give our spreadsheet a name. Um, we'll call it uh, task list. Okay, great. And then we'll start adding our column names. So here, let's say each task will have a task ID. Um, of course, we need the task name, the task type, the deadline or when the task is due, the owner, We'll give it a priority to. Data is created. We'll give an ETA target date. Status. And then we'll add a few more columns. One will be for a file upload. Um, so in the future, this will help us uh, if we have a file, for example, um, we can actually upload it. As you're doing this, Justin, just two questions for you. Um, one, I see that this is this is very similar to a Excel spreadsheet. Is that right? Same capabilities is, and functions. That is correct. Yes. If you know how to use uh, an Excel spreadsheet, then you already know how to use um, uh, Visu spreadsheets. So, really, the Visu spreadsheets are um, abstractions of Mongo, uh, single Mongo tables, right? So one spreadsheet uh, is pretty much equivalent to one table in Mongo, except uh, on the front end, we don't ever see that, right? We don't see that um, this is actually a database. We see it as a spreadsheet. Um, and so that's one of the things that's powerful about Visru is that um, we have a simple interface, but actually in the back end, it's an actual database that we're interacting with. Okay, yeah, because that was my, that was leading my next question was, you know, what is the difference? And this is basically acting as our database for the application that we're building. Mm -hmm. but yes. Yeah, answer that. Thank you. So, so this yeah, will be one of um, one of many sorry, I was, that we'll create. I was just going to piggyback off of off of Ben there real quick. So mm -hmm. here we're we're creating kind of something from scratch. But let's say we already have um, data within our organization. Um, is it possible to import the already existing data? Or is this something that we would have to reformat to be able to, to import it in, to use within our application? How would that work? Sure. Like so let's there's... say if all my data was in an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So there, in my mind, there are three very easy basic ways to do this. One is uh, just like you said, if you have your data already in an Excel spreadsheet, um, we can actually copy and paste that uh, from Excel into Visu itself. Um, and that works fairly easily. It's, um, I use it all the time. Um, another way is to actually um, connect to a backend database. We can pull data from that database and then populate the spreadsheet. Um, and then another way is um, it's similar to copying and pasting from an Excel file, um, except that um, we don't have to copy and paste. So basically it's, it's an uh, import function where you upload your um, CSV into the system. Um, and then our workflow actually looks at that data, parses it, and then saves it automatic, automatically for you in the spreadsheet. 
Okay, so and we can we can take a look at kind of those other options maybe in a future in a future video, but absolutely it's good to know. Okay, so now we have our spreadsheet. Um, so once we create our spreadsheet, we can always access our uh, list of spreadsheets on the left navigation here while in edit mode. So if we click on spreadsheet, we see our task list spreadsheet is here. And then against each of the columns, we have specific settings. So we have options to set the data type. Is it a string? Is it uh, will this column be holding numerical values, date values, etc. Um, we can index the columns for uh, fast retrieval within the workflow. Um, and then I want to show you guys how to do uh, drop down columns, which is um, let's take, for example, the status. So if you notice here, the status is actually in free form. Right, so if we want to update the status, let's say if we have a prog if a, a task was in progress and we wanted to mark it done, um, we wouldn't come in here and type done, right? We'd want a drop down menu with options to choose from. So in order to do that, we'll uh, create a second spreadsheet, which will act as our meta spreadsheet. So over here, if we click create new element, create a spreadsheet, And this will be called source lookup. Okay, so basically what we'll do is we'll populate this spreadsheet and then our task spreadsheet will actually um, pull from that. So let's see, we'll want a priority. Task type and status. Okay, so typically for tasks we have low, medium and high, and then for task type, you can say this is a bug, an enhancement, or a feature, a new feature. And then the status will say in progress. Hold and then complete it. Right, so very simple uh, priorities, task type, and statuses. So I'll go ahead and hit save. Now, what we want to do is in our task spreadsheet, we have these columns, right? So we're going to pull these columns into that spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's essentially just like the, the first task list spreadsheet is referencing the source lookup spreadsheet. Exactly. A, okay, for options. Yeah. Okay, so now we have our source lookup spreadsheet and let's go ahead and um, assign those columns. So for the task type, we'll go ahead and over here and drop down columns and the source object, we're gonna be looking for our source spreadsheet. Okay, we'll go ahead and select that. So on the right side here, this is where you're just choosing kind of the different spreadsheet and then right here, the different column, correct? Exactly, yeah. Okay, So since we have the task type, we're editing that one right now. We're in the settings for that. We'll go ahead and choose task type. And now if we hit update, watch what happens. So you'll notice now against each row, we have this little triangle. And if we click on it, there we go. We have our drop down bug enhancement and feature. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that for the other two columns now. Cool, so we have priority set or low, medium, high against each task. Now for the final one, 
the status. So, so yeah, now that you've linked everything, um, those three columns will always have that drop down going forward, right? Exactly. Um, and not only in the spreadsheet. So for example, if we were to, um, if we were editing a particular task within a form, um, we automatically, the form automatically inherits this dropped out ability. Um, so there's nothing special you need to do. Once it's set in the spreadsheet, anywhere the status priority or task type is used, we can, uh, it automatically leverages this dropdown so we can um, use it right away, right? Nothing extra to do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again to, to Justin for walking us through uh, these very basic steps of creating your first application, going through the app container, uh, dashboard creation, um, as well as this initial spreadsheet. Um, again, thanks, Justin. And I believe that'll be all for us today uh, from Ben and I. We'll go ahead and see you all in the next time in the next video. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Thanks, guys.